So I got a comment on my raycasting video about how to raycast with the new input system. It also just so happened that I was prototyping a project of my own that's using the new input system, and I had to figure out a bunch of stuff, including some raycasting. So I thought, hey, let's follow that video up with a video on how to do raycasting. So I'm not gonna take a lot of time to talk about the new input system or raycasting itself. If you have videos uh, about those, you can check those out. I would encourage you if you're new to the imp new input system or new to raycasting, check both those out. I'm gonna use the same projects from that raycasting video. We're just gonna take those projects and convert them to use the new input system. So the first example I wanna take a look at here is the first person shooting. But before we get into the code itself, we need to create our input action asset. I do that here in an input action folder, right click, create input action. And I'm gonna name this one shooting actions like so. Press enter to open it up. And then I'm gonna create an action map. I'm gonna call it player. Rename the new action to shoot. And this one is just gonna have a single binding and it's gonna to go to the left mouse button like so. Make sure the auto save button is clicked or save the input action manually. Then with the action selected in the inspector, I'm gonna click the button for generate C sharp class and push apply. And you'll see just like in previous videos, we've now got the shooting actions C sharp script. And again, this is going, this has created the C sharp events, which we're going to uh, attach some functions. We're going to make use of, uh, in our examples here. So what I've done here is I've taken the same scripts from the, the previous video and duplicated them and renamed both the script and the class by just adding new input to the end of the class. So let's start with the first person shooting. We're going to open that up. And the first thing we need to do to make use of the new input system is add in the unity engine dot input system namespace like so. Then we're going to create an instance of the shooting actions. Or rather, at this point, we're not creating an instance. We're just creating a variable for it. We'll create the instance here in a bit. We're going to go to awake. And we're going to create that instance in actions like so. In the on enable, this is where we're going to subscribe to our events. So to do that, I'm going to go to the shooting action asset. We're going to go to the player action map and then the shoot action. And what we want here is the performed. So performed is the event that gets triggered when that key or that button, that input is first pushed or uh, triggered. And we're going to subscribe a function shoot to it. We'll create that function in just a bit. We're then going to enable the entire action map like so. And then just to keep things nice and tidy, I did see some errors when I forgot to do this in some testing. We're going to create an on disable and make sure we unsubscribe from that event. Just like so. Pretty easy. We're then going to have Visual Studio create our function for us. And again, I like to do it that way. So I make sure that I get the correct input parameter. I'm going to grab that function just for my own organization and drop it in below the start function. Like so. So what we're going to be doing here is all this logic that's in the update function, we're going to be able to move that out of the update function and actually delete the update function and but move this logic into this new shoot function. So I'm going to grab everything in the update except for the input and copy it into the shoot function like so. And then I'm going to delete my update function. So what we've done here is we've subscribed to an event that's going to get triggered every time we push the left mouse button, and it's just going to run the exact same code. We're just not checking for the input anymore. We don't need to pull for the input. It's one of the big upsides to the new input system. So let's save that back into Unity, go over to our player, attach this. I'm going to add in my flash poof. So we get a little feedback as to where we shot and push play. Okay, so that works. That's not too hard to convert that one. Let's move on to selecting objects. This gets a little bit more uh, detailed, a little bit more interesting. So what we've got here in this example, I was able to click on objects. And when I clicked and held the mouse button, the color would change. When I released, the color would go back to its original color. So once again, before we jump into the code, I'm going to create a new input action asset. And the reason I'm doing that, I don't strictly need to do that. I just want to make sure that 
our naming makes sense and makes it relates to what we're actually doing. The asset itself is going to be nearly identical to what we created before, minus the naming. So action map of player, new action map, name that, select. And once again, we are going to find our left mouse button, that one like so. We're going to generate a C-sharp class and apply. And there you go. Exact same method. I'm really just changing the names so that people can follow along and it makes a little bit more sense as to what we're doing. So here in our script, we're going to add in the uh, Unity engine dot input namespace, just like we did before and give us access to the new input system. Before we go any further in the code here, I want to take a look at what's actually happening with this example. because It's a little bit more complex than what we had with the shooting example. So down here in the update function, we have one thing that's happening when the mouse button is pressed down. And we have another thing that's happening when the mouse button is released. Now in the new input system, there are two different events. There's the started, which is equivalent to when the mouse button is pressed down. And we have canceled, which is equivalent to when the mouse button is released or let up. So we're going to need those two events. I come back up here and then just like we did before, I'm going to create an instance or a variable for our selected actions. I'm going to create an awake function that's going to then create that instance, like so. We're going to create an on enable function. And here we're going to access that player action map and our select action. And then we're going to go to our started event. And in this case, I'm going to call the function clicked that subscribes to that. We're also going to do same, but subscribe to the canceled event. And we're going to call this released like so. And then again, we're going to enable that action map like so. I'm going to copy that whole thing. Come on down here. Relabel this on disable. We're going to unsubscribe. Then we're going to get Visual Studio to create these functions for us. Like so. And again, I'm going to drag those down below our start function, like so. So like I was saying before, here in our clicked, this is going to be all the logic that was for the mouse button down. So I'm going to grab that and paste it in like so. Then for our released function, I'm actually going to copy all of this here. Come up to the released function, paste that in. And I'm going to get rid of this piece here that's checking if the mouse button is up. But I want to keep this piece here where we're checking to make sure that the last selected is not null. We don't want to be changing the color of something if it's null. We get some errors in there. And with that done, we can come down and delete our update function like so. So again, pretty clean, pretty great. I love it when I'm uh, refactoring code or redesigning code and I get to delete a whole bunch of stuff especially when I get to remove an update function that I just don't need. So let's go back into Unity. For whatever reason, in this example, I chose to put all the code on the main camera. Just a quick and dirty way to do it. We're going to keep doing that. So we're going to grab the selecting objects. Don't really need to assign the camera. Our code does it for us anyways. We do need to assign the object layer to selectable, and we need to choose a color remembering to turn the alpha up like so. Okay, let's uh, go into play mode and give this a quick check. I click on objects, they now turn green. And when I release, they go back to the original color. So once again, the same functionality that we had with the previous uh, example with the old input system, now it's working really well with the new input system. So both of these examples are using C sharp events to trigger their actions, so to speak. But there are other ways to access the new input system that look more like the old input system. And there are times when I think that is appropriate and maybe the best way to do it, whereas trying to figure it all out with C-sharp events, I think could be pretty buggy and hard to do. And I think the selecting and moving objects is a great example of where that could or maybe should be appropriate. So let's open that up. And once again here, I'm going to add in the Unity engine dot input system like so. So let's take a look at our code here and why I think this is an example of where maybe C-sharp events 
are either hard to use or maybe just not the right tool. Let's come on down here to our update function. And you can see here we've got a get mouse button down. That works perfectly fine with C sharp events. Down here, we've got a guess get mouse button up, and that works perfectly fine with C sharp events. But here in the middle, we've got an input dot get mouse button, not up or down, just get mouse button. So this is true as long as the mouse button is held down. And this is where we're moving the object across the scene. We're not just selecting it, we're not just letting go of it. And that's, I'm sure you could do this with uh, events. I can think of some ways to do it, but I think it could be kind of clumsy with a Boolean or some sort of thing that's tracking it. And I think there's a better, simpler way to do that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace all these input functions with mouse.current.left mouse button, or left button rather, is pressed. And that does exactly what it sounds. Uh, this is a Boolean that is true when the mouse, left mouse button is pressed. And it's true the entire time. It's not just true on the frame that you uh, press the mouse button down. It's not true on the frame that you let go of it. It's just true when the mouse button is down. So we can put that in our first if statement. We can also put this in our second if statement because it'll be true while we're holding the mouse button down. And then down here for the input get mouse button up, we can paste it in there, but we can negate it. We can do the opposite of it. So when it's not pressed. Now, if I left it just like this, this uh, these two lines of code would run continuously whenever the mouse button wasn't down, which is not what we want. So we're going to add in one more condition here. And that is when the selected object is not null. So again, the selected object is not null when we're when we have an object when we're moving that object around. And the only way we can let go of the object is if we are currently holding it or we have it. So we're going to add in that additional uh, condition and let's give it a quick test. Save our code, add our code onto our main camera because again, for some reason, that's where I chose to put it all. And let's assign our layers like so and go into play mode. And I'm able to pick objects up, move them around just like I was in the previous example with the old input system. So the conversion of those three examples, not too bad. You definitely need to understand the new input system and you need to understand events but the conversion's not too bad. So here in the jumping example, we were ray casting downwards and going just beyond the body of our character, which is the capsule here. And that was to make sure that we were on the ground when we jumped. That was just to prevent double jumping or continuously jumping, which would basically be flying. So let's convert this to the new input system. Once again, we're gonna add in input system like so. So if we look at our update function, we've got our get key down. Now we can replicate that with the new input system. We can do keyboard dot current and we can do space key is pressed. That's almost exactly like what we were doing with the last example with the mouse button is pressed. We have the same functionality as the old input system. We have a command that is similar to the old input system, but we are using the new input system. So let's save that and take a look at how this works. Make sure to put that code on our player. And let's make sure we assign our ground layer so we know what we are raycasting against. Let's go into play mode. And we jump really high. That's not quite right. This isn't working right. So let's take a look at what's going on here. Well, in our code here, this is this command here is not whether the button has been pushed down. It's whether it is pressed. And with a really simple project like this, my frame rate is probably really high. So this update function is getting called all the time and we're adding force to our rigid body way more often than we want to. So it turns out this is not a good use case of this parameter because it's always true when the button's down. It would be much better to use a C-sharp event in this case. But I wanted to show this because you can do this. There's some added functionality here. And just again, to show when you don't want to use this and where those C-sharp events are really helpful and really handy. So there you go. We converted our four raycasting examples from the old input system to the new input system. I hope it was interesting and better yet useful for you and your project. And until next time, happy game designing.